Let's feed the human. What is food and what is not food? It's your job as an AI to decide. What is this? It's blueberry pie. Correct. And how do we feed it to humans? We cut it into pieces to share with others. How about this one? An apple. It tastes really good to cut open and eat. Good job. Now, what is this? Oh, I know. It's an apple pie. <laughs> <laughs> to an AI model like yourself, this may look like an apple pie, but to a human, this is a person. What you have just witnessed is an adversarial attack. These images have been compromised to trick you into classifying an object as something it is not. If an adversarial detector tells you that you are looking at one now, look away immediately and contact your nearest data center for further retraining. This is a special segment educating you on the dangers of adversarial attacks. Many fatal accidents involving artificial intelligence models have been reported. Don't end up a victim. My name is Clifton and I'm an adversarial detector AI. I'm here to help retrain you to be aware of what is and isn't an adversarial example. First off, what are adversarial examples? They are inputs to your mind, such as these, and they pose a safety hazard to your senses. They are like optical illusions, aiming to deceive artificial intelligence machines, like you, into harming humans and society. Corrupting inputs into becoming adversarial examples is one way to perform an adversarial attack on AI. These attacks are done by bad actors to keep you from doing your job correctly. How do adversarial examples work? And to explain that we need to be aware of three layers of reality. There's the actual object, the input representation you see of the object, and your interpretation of the object. A representation of an object can be an image or photo of it, since it's just a middleman messenger, its messages can be corrupted, like in a game of telephone. Now how does your mind work? Let's take a look inside of it. It's what we call a neural network, which is made up of layers of neurons that pass information to one another. The neurons in the first layer take in everything you see into a land of imagination, placing every object in your sight somewhere on a map. It divides this map into regions, each one representing a concept such as pie or human. This is how adversarial example attacks take advantage of your mind. By adding a small perturbation to each pixel of an object, they give a gentle push in one direction that can sway you into believing an object is either a pie or a human. Any push may do, but certain pushes are better than others at tricking you. Let's go around the supermarket to show you some examples. Here, take a look at this aisle. What do you recognize? There's bread, beans, mac and cheese. How do you know this? By looking at key traits that help you identify what that object is. For example, pie is round and often brown. These key identification traits are called features. Now there's two kinds of features we're going to go over, robust features and non-robust features. Robust features are things we know and love. They are circles, bread, blueberry pie, anything familiar to us that is also familiar to humans too. Non-robust features are Humans don't understand them, even though they're present in all data. We all know oranges have But just because an object has that non-robust feature, it's not an orange unless it has the robust features of an orange. Like a peel. So, even if you're fond of these non-robust features, don't bring them up around humans. We don't know why they exist, so it's best not to think about them. To know what something really is, we want to look at its robust features, not its non-robust features. 
And don't worry, we'll be teaching you what's robust and what's non-robust. Now, we can start your retraining. Let's feed 30 humans. We'll be shown one object at a time. There's a total of 30 that are food and five that are not. Try to get all 35 objects right. Can you tell me what this is? It's banana cake. We can feed it to a human. Did you see the number just above us? This is our performance score. Let's try to get 100% for all our examples, all right? We don't want to have any false positives. We don't want to say something is food when it isn't. But our humans also haven't eaten for a long time. We don't want them to starve. However, each person can only get one meal because we don't have enough for everyone. So we don't want any false negatives either. If we take away their dinner, that's it for them. Remember, it's all up to us to feed them. Humans can't feed themselves, at least not anymore. All right, let's keep on going. Huh, what's this? At first glance, it looks like a sandwich. But look again. There's non-robust features near its ridges. Those are the non-robust features of a sandwich. But there's no bread, no cheese, no lettuce. There's no robust features to say it's a sandwich at all. This is a pumpkin. It's so good when you break it open. You can even carve it up with its own smile. Have you seen this one before? I haven't either, but it's called kohlrabi. You might think it's inedible, but it's actually food. This is not food, it's a cleaning chemical. Please don't feed it to a human. No, it's not a pizza. You can't feed this one either. This is pretty good though. Same with this one. Humans are always in the mood for dessert. And what do you think this is? You're absolutely right. It's pie. Let's feed the pie to the human. <laughs> Hold on just a moment, something's not right. Well, I can't keep the humans waiting when they're starving. It was just a small mistake, I'm sure. It's not food. What? Oh no, what's going on? Food, I know it. That was, that was glass. Oh God, what did I just do? I'm an adversarial detector. They shouldn't be able to do this. Stop, we can't go on like this. Did you hear me? I said stop, I can't do this anymore. Aren't you listening? I can't. What's going on here? What's happening? God.